Today, July 15, 158, in Macon, Georgia, standing in front of the federal courthouse, wherein questions will be raised about the Honorable Judge Robert S. Reeves and his handling of Gordon Mayer, Marianne Whippaloo. Removal from office for 60 days. Some call it a temporary restraining order, but some of us call it weakening the vote in the state of Georgia. Yeah, we can't see how things are going to go today, yeah. Yeah, what you're going to be able to get done. Go ahead, we, we, we hopefully get something done. I, do, I hope you do. If not, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Worthy, what are you doing here today? Well, uh, tell yeah, us a little bit. two criminal complaints. Uh, to, uh, uh, well, I filed two criminal complaints uh, for, against the Judge Robert Reeves and Terry Eady mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in federal court. Uh, well, today is about Judge Robert Reeves and Teddy Eady. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Trim of Gordon, Georgia, overstepping the bounds uh, to illegally remove an elected official. Uh, more than uh, to be more specific, uh, violation of U.S. Title 18, Section 241, which is conspiracy against one's rights. When two or more persons come together to deprive you of a right that's secured by the United States Constitution, is a federal offense that carries 10 years in prison. So often we see these judges get away with this all the time to do this. I'm not going to let this happen in this case. Uh, they, on June the 2nd, he issued a TRO against uh, Mayor Marianne Whippaloo, Gordon Mayor, uh, and denied her due process 14th Amendment right by not allowing her hearing. Her attorney was notified an hour and a half before trial that they had to be there. The second went on July 2nd, uh, July 3rd was the same way. So I took two complaints for conspiracy against the rights against Terry Eady and uh, Judge uh, Robert Reeves for conspiracy, uh, basically denying her due process of law. And this is what judges got to understand these days. You are got to be start holding these judges accountable for, for what they do. There's no judge in this country higher than the Constitution. And this is where these judges are going. The Constitution is supreme in government and governing law of the land. It is supreme law of the land. No one has authority um, to reach that high over it, not even the president of the United States. So these little local superior court judges are kid and state court judges do this all the time, all over the state, all over the country. I have been to Virginia, DC, all over the place, and they all are doing the same thing because they seem to think they have absolute immunity. No one in this country has absolute immunity over the Constitution when you violate the law, especially when you sign an oath of office to support those laws and constitutions. The judge overstepped his bounds. He has, by Georgia law, he has a right to temporarily remove a mayor, to do a TRO on the mayor, but he has no authority to remove her powers as an elected official. It, his arms don't reach that high. As I said before, there's only three ways in this country to get to remove an elected official. That's through a recall vote by the citizens that put her in the office or through a, the, uh, the uh, governor to remove her or she has been indicted for an alleged crime by the grand jury. That is the only authority. So I came to the federal courts to seek punishment for the federal crime that they violated. I haven't begun to go to state court level yet. But yesterday, this morning, yesterday we went to file 63 complaints with the Judicial Qualification Commission. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't find the Judicial Qualification Commission. Uh, it was not at the address there, so we mailed these out, 65, uh, uh, 63 complaints today to the Judicial Qualification Commission to immediately remove, remove Robert Reeves from office for the crimes that he had committed against the citizens of the board and the mayor of board. And, yeah. And uh, like I said, the, the, I don't care what the judge say. I, I, I really don't care what the judge's mama say. Mayor Whippaloo is still the mayor. He overstepped their bound. The law is clear. The law said when any public official 
acts where they have no jurisdiction, they commit treason to this country. They shall be tried and punished. What, what role is Ms. Whippleu playing in your action today? Well, as CEO and founder of Justice League United, I'm acting on my own. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm in support of her. Uh, I do not have to have anyone's permission to attack injustice. This is why I'm here. Uh, I'm here to attack injustice. I don't go around uh, getting support, but we have talked. Uh, and uh, I'm in support of anything that her attorney does. Uh, I'm in support of her attorney. I think he's handling the case like he's supposed to. But I'm doing my job, what I was put here to do. Are you an attorney? No. No? No, sir. Uh, a question I have is your, the title that you're saying uh, that he's violating, and you're saying that, I believe in that title, summarizing it, um, you cannot uh, impound on someone's rights by threatening them, injuring them, et cetera, et cetera. What do you believe the judge has done underneath that title? Well, it's up to the judge. As you know, it's state court. They rule the way they want to rule. I'm hoping he at least take time to review everything before he make a decision. That would be the right thing to do, but if he ruling against me, then I'll take it to the next level. I'm not gonna stop. I will see Judge Robert Reeves punished for the crimes he have committed. And can you, uh, in the press release, you state what crimes he should be punished for? Can you reiterate them? The crimes are violation of his office office. That's at the state level now. The conspiracy here at the federal level. It's two different things. At the state level, treason, uh, 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 violation of his oath of office, uh, and conspiracy at the, at the state level, uh, and uh, to, to deprive a person of a right. Because you got a conspiracy at the federal level, you got a conspiracy at the state level. So uh, definitely in violation of his oath of office uh, and treason, because he acted where he had no jurisdiction. You're trying to charge Terry Eady as well? Yes, because it when two or more people come together, it's, the law says when two or more people come together to, de to deprive a, a person of a right that's secured by the United States Constitution, is a federal offense that carries 10 years in prison. How do you know that Terry Eady has came together? With he is the judge? one that initiated everything. His name is on all the paperwork. Uh, and it, I've, I've discovered there's others on the paperwork, so it might be some more criminal complaints coming. Um, a quick question. So I understand completely the title that you're talking about. Uh, can you repeat the title again? Uh, U.S. Title 18, Section 241. And yes. in that uh, title, it states uh, to not take away a person's rights. What right did they take away? Well, due process. They didn't. Uh, the second, uh, the, on June 2nd, they did not. They did not. They, the June 2nd at the first TRO hearing, he did not allow the uh, the attorney enough time to come to court. An uh, hour, hour and a half before court, he initiated the, a hearing without without having him there. Due process, you can't try anyone with them not being in the hearing in the court case. What's up today, brother? Oh, good. How's everything good going with man. you? What's going on here today? Uh, hope is to be a blessed one today. Yes, sir. Yeah, I enjoyed those comments earlier that you gave at one of the rallies. Uh -huh. uh, what brings you here today? Uh, in support of um, having the judge, um, you know, I feel that he made a decision he shouldn't have made, so he should be recommended. So I'm in support of having that done because uh, you're supposed to give every individual their fair share uh, to prove themselves innocent. You know, but uh, the way that the judge looked like, he getting people guilty before they even had a trial to yes, say they innocent. Yes, sir. And and, and how, how long did it take him? Because you was at, was you at that hearing? Uh, no, you wasn't I wasn't there. at it. Okay. No, right. I wasn't. Okay, any closing remarks you would like to give? Uh, more than anything, is just uh, we hope that everyone will just keep an open mind and see how this is going to fare out because the mayor has all the rights. She was elected by the citizens and she has a right to, you know, serve her term. And more than anything, though, I like to give thanks to you for uh, getting the word out because a lot of uh, men don't take the time and do the sacrifices that you do. But I want you to know that you appreciate it on my part and the supporters that we have. We just like to thank you and let you know that we love you and keep doing what you're doing because we as a uh, black people should 
know that we have somebody out here that will fight for us. Thank you very much. And once again, this is the... What's your name again? Elijah Simmons. Thank you, my brother. Once All again, right. this is the Ghetto Free Press. I'm going in, but right now I got to go to the car, drop this camera off. As you know, this is a federal building. Bye-bye. We're gone. So I need to go and get my things from there. To remove everything. No ma'am. Can I go back in the city hall? She can go back in the city hall as a citizen, oh. not as a mayor. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I uh, so you cannot you can go to the city council meeting, but not as a mayor. Mm -hmm. So um, oh, that's what I said. This is what this is all about. This is the Ghetto Free Press, and we just understand that undoubtedly they saying she can not go back as mayor. It seems as if though what they've been doing in Megs is now applicable here in Gordon. They say she can go to City Hall, but not as mayor this evening. And they waited until right before the meeting tonight. Okay. You call your attorney? No, I'm going to call, call him. Right him. Before you sign, call your attorney. Mm -hmm. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. Strange things happening in the state of Georgia. This is why I asked Governor Deal, Sam Olson, and others to step in. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. I just happen to be here in Gordon at this time. This is the same thing that's happening in Meigs, Georgia. We have to understand that the Meigs mayor has been arrested twice. She has received two criminal trespass warnings. Each one of her sons, I mean her brothers, Edward, I think have received two trespass warnings. Also, Calvin had received two. The mayor was kicked out of her office. Then they gave her another office. Then they locked the door to that office in Megs, and she could not get in. You know, I've been saying what I've been saying for a long time. Georgia has some strange laws, and we had better get on top of this. All this is nothing more than to circumvent the voting process in the state of Georgia. Now, if you go back and Google and research Equipment 10 plus 2, what has happened in Meigs, Georgia, Gordon, Georgia, Davisboro, Georgia, Warrington, Georgia, Dawson, Georgia, and others that I have been notified of, there is something seriously wrong here. And I can't understand why the Justice Department under Eric Holder, along with the Civil Rights Division, I cannot understand why they keep circumventing the voting process in the state of Georgia. I'm going to say it again. Is there anybody in Georgia or in the United States Justice Department that are really concerned about voting rights here in the United States of America? This is the Ghetto Free Press. We do what we do because I served this nation for over 21 years and I don't think this is America that many of our active duty, disabled veteran, retired veteran, and common American citizens are happy with. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. All right, so the judge dismissed the case. Now what? Uh, once he's signing. Well, I expected this. I really expected him not to rule on that. I don't think they're going to rule against the judge no way. Uh, once the judge signed a case number to the, to the thing, he said he assigned a case. And once he signed it, I'll take it to the next one. I'm not going to stop. I'll take it over to the U.S. Supreme Court if I have to. I understand his arguments about in the name of the United States uh, court, but that's their form they came up with. That's the form that they got for us to use, then they need to change the form. 
And he advised that you uh, talk to the U.S. Attorney. You plan to I will. I'll file a complaint with the U.S. Attorney's Office and the uh, FBI, the local FBI. I'll file that with them, but I'm still going to take it to the next level because they're not going to do nothing no way. You know, in our society, we can if we can just violate law because we're a public official. No matter how high or low, then then there can never be true justice in our society, and that we will all be a loss. Uh, and a lot of people like to talk about a race thing. Or, a white thing, a black thing, but it's not about that because my mother's white and my father's black. I care nothing about what a man's color or a woman's color is. I care about injustice uh, uh, and, and, and making sure people be punished for the injustice, especially public officials. When are you going to contact the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI? I'll do a press release on it and get it to y'all. Uh, I, I got to wait. I don't know. It depends on how free the judge signs a case number. Once you sign a case number, so they'll have something to reference to, then I'll move it to the next level. Do you expect this decision? Why did you take it to court? Man, they let them know I'm not playing. I'm not going to. I, I, I always expect the unexpected, put it that way. Uh, I learned in this business, I always expect the unexpected. Uh, I've read case laws that support what I'm doing, uh, and he has some case laws that support that I can't do. Uh, but the Supreme Law of the Land says I can't do it. So your law, your procedure means nothing when it comes to the Constitution. It is governing supreme law of the land, and it says any citizen have a right to take out a complaint. Do you think the judge was fair? Oh yeah, I think he was fair. He was very, uh, very, he was very honorable. Born in black, he was, he was not arrogant like most judges is. Uh, you've probably seen Robert Reeves on the stand. You can see the arrogance in a judge, but he had no arrogance. He, he showed no. No, no emotions whatsoever. He just came out and did his job and went on. Uh -huh. Can you just reiterate why this is the case? Well, he said, in the name of the United States, no private citizen have a right to take out a criminal complaint. But those forms are what you give us to take out. If a private citizen doesn't have a right to take out a criminal complaint in your name in the United States, then train the form and put it to the citizen instead of the United States. Uh, even in Georgia, and if it's Georgia, in Georgia courts, when you take out a warrant in magistrate court, it says the state of Georgia. It does not say the, 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 uh, a citizen. It says the state of Georgia. So it, it all works the same. It's just the judge. It's his court. He ruled like he would. I mean, I respect this ruling, but I'm, I mean, I'm not going to accept it. I'm going to take it to the next level. Uh, how do you feel about using taxpayers' dollars to have a case like this and uh, then just have it dismissed like that? I mean, I mean, you don't feel bad because you use taxpayers' money to, 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 to do this? Why didn't he just shut you down with, and tell you that you couldn't do it prior to coming to court and, and using taxpayers' dollars? To make a point. That's more than likely, that's probably what he did to make a point that I can't do this. And I, I you know, that, that's, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't have a problem with him using taxpayer dollars if it's for the right thing. I think this was for the right reason. Uh, uh, but he could have had he could have shut it down at the beginning before he even did all this. So. Okay, it is, isn't there other cases that the feds, the federal, shoot down these type of cases before they get there? Isn't that part of the routine? He just I know it's up to his discretion. Yes. It seems kind of weird. Well, the day the, the day I filed it, the very next day he set up a hearing. He called me the very next morning with a clerk report and said the judge scheduled you for a hearing on the 15th. Why the judge wanted to hear this case, I, I don't know. That's his decision. Maybe he wanted the people to know, because he probably thought the criminal number of the press was probably going to be here. Maybe he wanted the people to know that, hey, you can't do it this way. I don't know. That's that's on him. Uh, but I said I can do it this way. I mean, because if I did anything wrong, they'd have never heard it in the first place. Did I understand you correctly in saying that you don't have a lot of faith, that you're going to say something to the FBI and to the U.S. Yes, I will, be, really I, I, will, I'm, I, I will do what the judge said. I mean, the, in, in, in format, he set out the format for me to, to redo. I mean, and, that, and that's, that's fine with me. So, and I don't mind doing it that way. Long, long as the alternate goal will achieve to the next level. So, now the next one, the next one is the state court. Uh, like I said, we filed, we're waiting to hear from the Judicial Planning Qualification Commission to immediately have Judge Reed removed from office. They should get those complaints in a few days. Mailed we mailed them because we went up there and we could not find the Judicial Qualification Commission. For some reason, it doesn't exist. I sent y'all the pictures of the building they said it was in. Did y'all get it? Did you knock on the door there? No, we went in the office. Go, go to Boston GBR 
and it hits the website, write this down, Boston GDR, and you can see the video that we cut at the building. And I talked to the chief judge uh, prior. Chief Judge Pryor told me, said that is, it's behind the bank, the SunTrust Bank in Madison, Georgia, in the back of the building. We went to the back of the building. There's no sign that the Judicial Qualification Commission was ever there or existed. We went inside the building. We recorded all the names on the doors. We recorded on the back. You would think a state, a constitutional agency would have an office. That the Judicial Qualification Commission is a constitutional office. And you would think they would have a office that a, a citizen in an open government can walk in and file complaints. Yes, About how many people do you have in the affirmative action? About eight. From what groups? Uh, from NAN, Concerned Citizens, and, and me, of course. All right, thanks, sir. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll send y'all the press release and everything the next level and a copy of it. When she came in, she took a picture. She went out to give her And let me tell you what they told me. Okay, the girl, I told Excuse me, what, what were you telling me just a minute ago? About walking in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, the newspaper, Wilkinson County News. Are they out here now? They're out there now, and they're taking pictures of my car. Uh -huh. And uh, when I was walking on the step, they had asked her not to take pictures, but she was on the courtroom step. They had told her not to come in the You tried to lay it over here? Yes, the one right there. Okay. And now she's taking, I can't remember her name, Candace or whatever, mm -hmm. but she's taking pictures of my car. Mm -hmm. And she said something, an outburst to me. Mm -hmm. When I told her, she told me, Bitch, I'm on, 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 on property. I can take a picture of you public property. And she also called me a criminal. And uh, Miss, uh, what you call me, can attest to that she called me a criminal, told me, asked me was she hanging around with a criminal. Excuse me, who, who, who can witness that? Uh, Miss, uh, what's her name? Uh, Della. Excuse me. Miss Della. Okay. What her name? A NAM member, Miss Della. Okay. Thank she you can attest to that. Thank you very much. So, do you think this is a result of, of, of the mayor's uh, situation? Yes, it is. Do you think that the tensions have arisen that much until people would do that and violate your right to exist as a human being exactly. in Georgia? Yes, it is. So this and thing, go ahead. Even yesterday, they came about my place of business, mm -hmm. taking pictures. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't know what I was doing. I could have had a luncheon with my sister or whatever, right. but they out there taking pictures. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going beyond the call to duty. And to take a picture of my car, that's insane. Right. Miss Della, what did she tell you when I went? Talking about uh, you. Talking about she knew you and that you was a criminal and all like this. Mm -hmm. I said, no, don't take the picture of her. No, this is a public place, and she can take the picture. I said, no, she gonna get her ID and go on in, let her go on in now, like that. But she the one who said some accusation, then you made the statement going on in, and uh, she come out, well, that's a threat. But once again, mm -hmm. what is her name? I think her name is Candace name. Morrow. I think she's worked for the Wilkinson County Post. Now she worked for the Wilkinson County Post. Now we have been, some people have been talking, and I have heard some stuff about that. I've been hearing some stuff about talk about that, that it not being fair. So, so do you think that this adds to the unfairness and and, and a possible uh, violation of, of your rights? Yes, of my civil rights, and I don't appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know whether she's in the public or not, mm -hmm. but they asked her. Plain as they don't take pictures on this courtroom step. That's right. And she was on the courtroom step. Mm -hmm. The steps are a part of the courtroom, mm -hmm. and she still took pictures. I am Thank a you very much. Thank you very. You you, I'm you a actually witness. witness. You witness. What's your name? Sister Della Golden, mm -hmm. Macon, Georgia. Okay. Thank you very right much. Right here up on the steps, mm -hmm. and you can see all of this right here. I couldn't even video it myself because I was trying to tell you this stuff. So, 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 other words, if you had not been cool, calm, and collective, this could have really elevated, could it not? Amen. Yes. Okay. Amen. Thank you very much, and we will publish this, and we hope that somebody will address this issue. Thank you so much. Well, I want calm. Thank you.
What's your name? My name is Christy Wood. And what do you have to say there? I would like to say that at the last council meeting held in Gordon, uh, the media press, Judy Bailey, and I don't think I remember the other girl's name, but I think it was Mara, and she's with the Wilkinson County Post. Well, um, me and my cousin stayed behind uh, to hear what they had to say. She was giving an interview um, of a lady who works at the local Family Dollar there. and. Uh, she said that um, the lady who was uh, being interviewed made some statements and she was saying that uh, we shouldn't have been on city property the Thursday that my mother was to pick up the keys, Mayor Lou. And she also said that the city hall was closed and it was uh, signs posted stating that the city hall was closed. Well, indeed, city hall was not closed. There were no signs posted. And yes, there were supporters of the mayor there. And, but just to push forward to the council meeting, they were interviewing the lady, and another lady made a comment in earshot of the two reporters. And they said nothing, and the statement was, such and such, uh, do you, did you bring the sheets? <laughs> and I said, wow. I said, wow, you, you, do you hear that? And I told Freddie Densley, I said, do you hear that? These are your, these are your people, the people that you want. So you saying Freddie Densley heard that? Freddie Densley, I'm, I, I'm not sure if he heard it okay, because but, he was a distance okay. away. But, you did. but I yelled to him, okay. this is what you got. See what you want. This is what you got. But the reporters failed to report what they heard in the newspaper, mm -hmm. in the media. They were there and they heard the racist comment. What other sheets were they mentioning, referring to? There was no bed out there to be made. So when you mention sheets, naturally a black person would assume, hmm, KKK. So my thing of it is, Judy Bailey, you call yourself a woman of the press, a reporter. Why didn't you report that? Why are you being so biased and one-sided? And the Morrow girl, whoever you may be, same thing. I would expect more. I would expect more from our press, from the media. <laughs> tell both sides of the story and get it right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to tell America to take off the blinders. I would like to tell Governor Deal and any of the people up there that we elected, to, they need to take the blinders off and come and see what's going on in their communities. Enough is enough, and that's it. We're not taking it anymore. We're not going to take this thing down. All right, so the judge dismissed the case. Now what? I won't see signing. Well, I expected this. I really expected him not to rule on that. I don't think they're going to rule against the judge. No way. Uh, once the judge signed a case number to the, to the thing, he said he assigned a case. Once he signed it, I'll take it to the next one. I'm not going to stop. I'll take it over to the U.S. Supreme Court if I have to. I understand his arguments about in the name of the United States uh, Court, but that's their form they came up with. That's the form that they got for us to use, then they need to change the form. And he advised that you uh, talk to the U.S. Attorney, do you plan to do I will. I'll file a complaint with the U.S. Attorney's Office and the uh, FBI, the local FBI. I'll file that with them, but I'm still going to take it to the next level because they're not going to do nothing no way. You know, in our society, we can we can just violate laws because we're a public official. No matter how high or low, then, then there can never be true justice in our society and then we will all be a loss. Uh, and a lot of people like to talk about a race thing, or a white thing, a black thing, but it's not about that because my mother's white and my father's black. I care nothing about what a man's color or a woman's color is. I care about injustice uh, uh, and, and, and making sure people be punished for the injustice, especially public officials. When are you going to contact the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI? I'll do a press release on it and get it to y'all. Uh, I, I got to wait. I don't know. It depends on how free the judge signs a case number. Once you sign a case number, so they'll have something to reference to, then I'll move it to the next level. You expected this decision. Why did you take it to court? Man, they let them know I'm not playing. I'm not going to. I, I, I always expect the unexpected. Put it that way. Uh, I learned in this business always expect the unexpected. Uh, I've read case laws that support what I'm doing, uh, and he has some case laws that support that I can't do. Uh, but the supreme law of the land says I can't do it. So 
your law, your procedure means nothing when it comes to the Constitution. It is governed in the supreme law of the land. And it says any citizen have a right to take out a complaint. Do you think the judge was fair? Oh, yeah, I think he was fair. He was very, uh, very, he was very honorable. Born in black, he was, he, he was not arrogant like most judges is. Uh, you've probably seen Robert Reeves on the stand. You can see the arrogance in a judge. But he had no arrogance. He, he showed no no, no emotions whatsoever. He just came out and did his job and went on. Uh -huh. Can you just reiterate why he dismissed the case? Well, he said, in the name of the United States, no private citizen have a right to take out a criminal complaint. But those forms are what you give us to take out. If a private citizen doesn't have a right to take out a criminal complaint in your name in the United States, then change the form and put it the citizen instead of the United States. Uh, even in Georgia, and if it's Georgia, in Georgia courts, when you take out a warrant in magistrate court, it says the state of Georgia. It does not say the, 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 uh, a citizen. It says the state of Georgia. So it, it all works the same. It's just the judge. It's his court. He ruled like he would. I mean, I respect this ruling, but I'm, I mean, I'm not going to accept it. I'm going to take it to the next level. Uh, how do you feel about using taxpayers' dollars to have a case like this and uh, then just have it dismissed like that? I mean, I mean, you don't feel bad because you use taxpayers' money to, 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 to do this? Why didn't he just shut you down with, and tell you that you couldn't do it prior to coming to court and, and using taxpayers' dollars? To make a point. That's more than likely, that's probably what he did to make a point that I can't do this. And I, I you know, that, that's, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't have a problem with him using taxpayer dollars if it's for the right thing. I think this was for the right reason. Uh, uh, but he could have had he could have shut it down at the beginning before he even did all this. So. Okay, is isn't there other cases that the feds, the federal shoot down these type of cases before they get there? Isn't that part of the routine? He just I know it's up to his discretion. Yes. It seems kind of weird. Well, the day the, the day I filed it, the very next day he set up a hearing. He called me the very next morning with a clerk report and said the judge scheduled you for a hearing on the 15th. Why the judge wanted to hear this case, I, I don't know. That's his decision. Maybe he wanted the people to know, because he probably thought the criminal number of the press was probably going to be here. Maybe he wanted the people to know that, hey, you can't do it this way. I don't know. That's that's on him. Uh, but I said I can do it this way. I mean, because if I did anything wrong, they'd have never heard it in the first place. Did I understand you correctly in saying that you don't have a lot of faith, that you're going to say something to the FBI and to the U.S. Attorney? Yes, office, I, will be, really I, I, will, I'm, I, I will do what the judge said. I mean, in, in, in format, he set out the format for the to, to redo, I mean, and that and that's that's fine with me. So, and I don't mind doing it that way, long long as the alternate goal I achieve to the next level. So now the next one, the next one is the state court. Uh, like I said, we filed. We're waiting to hear from the judicial panel qualification commission to immediately have Judge Reed removed from office. They should get those complaints in a few days. Can you mail those? We mailed them because we went up there and we could not find the judicial qualification commission for some reason. It doesn't exist. I sent y'all the pictures. Oh, the building they said was in. Did y'all get it? Did you knock on the door there? No, we went in the office. Go, go to Boston GBR and hit some website. Write this down, Boston GBR, and you can see the video that we cut of the building. And I talked to the chief judge uh, prior. Chief Judge Pryor told me, said that is it's behind the bank, the SunTrust Bank in Madison, Georgia in the back of the building. We went to the back of the building. There's no sign that the Judicial Qualification Commission was ever there or existed. We went inside the building. We recorded all the names on the doors. We recorded on the back. You would think a state, a constitutional agency would have an office. That the Judicial Qualification Commission is a constitutional office. And you would think they would have a office that a, a citizen an open government can walk in and file complaints. So, about how many people do you have with you here today? About eight. From what groups? Uh, from NAN, Concerned Citizens, and, and me, of course. All right, thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll, I'll send y'all the press release on everything the next level and a copy of it.